Hello, how are you doing this day? Uh, I'm going to be going over the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, the first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. It's chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, and then chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. Death was not God's doing. He takes no pleasure in the extinction of the living. To be, for this he created all. The world's created things have health in them. In them, no fatal poison can be found. And Hades holds no power on earth, for virtue is undying. Yet God did make man imperishable. He made him in the image of his own nature. It was the devil's envy that brought death into the world, as those who are partners, his partners, will discover. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Uh, it's chapter 8, verses 7, 9, and then 13 through 15. You always have the most of everything, of faith, of eloquence, of understanding, of keenness for any cause, and the biggest share of our affection. So we expect you to put the most into this work of mercy, too. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich but became poor for your sake to make you rich out of his poverty. This does not mean that he gave, he, this does not mean that to give relief to others, you ought to make things difficult for yourselves. It is a question of balancing what happens to be your surplus now against their present need, and the one day they may have something to spare that will supply your own need. That is how we strike a balance. As scripture says, the man who gathered much had none too much. The man who gathered little did not go short. And then for the gospel today. It's from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed by the lakeside. Then one of the synagogue officials came up, Jairus by name, and seeing in him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him and earnestly saying, My little daughter is desperately sick. Do come lay your hands on her and make her better and save her life. Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him. They were pressing all around him. Now there was a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for twelve years after long and painful treatment under various doctors. She spent all she had without being better for it. In fact, she was getting worse. She heard about Jesus, and she came up behind him, though the crowd through the crowd and touched his cloak. If I can touch even his clothes, she had told herself, I will be made well again. And the source of the bleeding dried up instantly, and she felt in herself that she was cured of her complaint. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, you see how the crowd is pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he continued to look around to see who had done it. Then the woman came forward, frightened and trembling, because she knew what had happened to her. She fell at his feet and told him the truth. My daughter, he said, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. While he was still speaking... Some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say, Your daughter is dead. Why put the master to any tr further trouble? But Jesus had overheard this remark of theirs, and he said to the official, Do not be afraid, only have faith. And he allowed no one to go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So they came to the official's house, and Jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping and wailing unrestrainedly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. So he turned them all out, 
taking the child's father and mother and his own companions, and he went to the place where the child lay. Taking the child's hand, he said to her, Tethila kum, which means, little girl, I tell you, get up. Little girl got up at once and began to walk about, for she was twelve years old. At this, they were overcome with astonishment, and he ordered them strictly to not let anyone know about it, and told them to give her something to eat. As I read these readings, a question pops into my head. Do you feel alive? In the first reading, we hear how God brings life. Sin, rather, Satan brings death, and when we follow the devil, we lose our life. For love is God, and God is life. So when we lose love, we lose life. Life is not taken away, rather, we walk away from it many times. And is walking away from God, we also walk away from love. And in walking away from love, we walk away from life itself. Do you feel alive? In the second reading, we reflect on the idea that Jesus gave all and he is our example. The one we should follow. So if he left heaven to come give us salvation, what then can we give? What do we have that we do not need that we can give to others? Me, I have too many guitars. Uh, sin, pride, greed, my attachment to things keeps me from giving things to others. Giving is love and hoarding is the antithesis of that. We can find love when we give and I believe that we need love to survive. We do not need to give ourselves into poverty, though some are called to do this through vocation, but we all have an abundance of something. Perhaps it's time, strength, wisdom, love, even perhaps material possessions like guitars or money. Are we at balance? For when we live in balance, we find peace. And through that, we find happiness. And that happiness is the fruit of love. And we feel love. And when we feel love, we feel alive. So, do you feel alive? In the gospel, Jesus encounters two different people who are in great need. The old woman with the hemorrhage and the father of the little girl who is sick. Jesus cares for both, even in the face of ridicule. Jesus asked, who touched my clothes? And his disciples were flummoxed by this so, many, so much that they, there were so many people around him that they were thinking, Master, we need to get going if we're going to help this little girl. When Jesus arrives and tells them all to not worry that she is sleeping, there are those who laughed at him. Yet Jesus puts them all out and he heals the girl. I can bet that the father and mother of the little girl and the woman cured of her hemorrhage for 12 years never felt more alive than on that day of their cure. Jesus poured out his excess, his love, his spirit, his ability and through that, he brought joy, love, peace, and happiness into the world. We can do the same by taking our excess time, talent, and our treasure and giving it to someone in need. Through, the, through that giving, we can feel the love of Jesus as he felt helping others. In turn, love is multiplied in the world for those in which we help, and love can swell. And love is the power source that feeds good deeds in the world. This world desperately needs love. And Jesus, and by working with Jesus, by sharing our excess, we can help his love be more present, more known in the world, and we will feel more alive. But do we feel alive? Perhaps not. Perhaps you are the woman hemorrhaging for 12 years or more. Perhaps you are the father desperately seeking a cure for your loved one who is at home dying. I can relate with that. I can remember the days when I felt dead. I was a dead man walking without a sliver of hope in the world until I humbled myself and begged God for help. You are not alone. 
Jesus is here for you now. Have faith. Imagine the woman spending all she had for 12 years and in an act of desperation because she humbled herself and tries to touch Jesus' cloak, knowing having faith in that act will heal her. Imagine a father desperately trying to find healing for his daughter, and he humbles himself by begging a traveling preacher for healing. And even after word comes that your little girl has died, he still has the faith and humility to ask this man to heal his daughter. Even when all are laughing at him and you for the notion that your little girl could be saved because it's impossible at that point. Nothing is impossible through Jesus. Things don't always work out the way we want them to, but they work out the way God wants them to if we soften, then open the door to our heart so that God can come in. And then we also must have humility and faith that he will take care of us. God has much. Too much. He has too much love, and he wants to share it with you. But we've got to be open to him. We have to have faith in him. Because if we do, we will receive his love. And with that love, we will feel alive. And more alive than we have ever been in our entire life. Do you feel alive? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, thank you. Thank you for this life and this world you have made for us. There is so much to absorb, so much going on, yet it can feel at times like that. It can feel bland. Help us to see you and your love in each bit of your creation and be exhilarated by it. Inspire us by your word and your love that we may take that excitement, go out into the world, share that, what we have and who we are and make this world a better place so that we may feel alive, feel love, and give love to all those that we meet and start a chain reaction where in which through your power and your love we can take part in lighting up this world with your spirit. God, we need you. We can't do it without you. You are the almighty God that loves us, makes us whole, heals us, and helps us to realize the beauty that we are, which is your creation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Please have a beautiful day and feel alive.